is my distinct pleasure to introduce Congressman Louis Gohmert of Texas's first congressional district. A Texas native, Congress Congressman Gohmert attended Texas A&M University and received his Juris Doctor from Baylor University Law School before serving as a state district judge for Texas's seventh judicial district for 10 years. Congressman Gohmert was first elected to Congress in 2004 and sits on the Subcommittee on the Constitution, Civil Rights, and Civil Liberties, the Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security, as well as the Task Force on Judicial Impeachment. Congressman Gohmert has been a powerful force in our fight for North Korean human rights, being a co-sponsor of H.R. 1771. We are thrilled to have Congressman Gohmert join us in being a voice for our voiceless North Korean brothers and sisters. Please join me in giving me a warm welcome to the Honorable Louis Gohmert. It's so great to be with you here today. And it's great to have heard. Yeah. Uh, so we've been blessed with a beautiful day. And I look around and see we've been blessed with very beautiful people here today. But as, and yes, I am from Texas. I live in Tyler, Texas. I'm a Christian and have been a deacon at Green Acres Baptist Church in Tyler. And I'm very proud that we have and support a Korean church as part of our church there in Tyler, Texas. You might not expect to find a Korean church in Tyler, Texas. Well, we have one. Why? Every city has a McDonald's and also a Korean church. <laughs> <laughs> Why would we have a Korean church as part of my church? It's because we're brothers and sisters. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and we, we look around the world at what's happening in South Korea, the incredible production, the incredible living standards, the uh, vast food, and there is so much plenty in South Korea. We look at North Korea, and we, we don't see that kind of food available. We don't see that kind of production coming out of North Korea. Well, gee, is it because there are smarter people in South Korea? Well, I think if you check, you'll find the DNA, the genetics, uh, tie North and South Korea together. It's not because there are smarter people in South Korea. They're brothers and sisters as well. But unlike uh, many of us, they're blood brothers and sisters genetically. So what could the difference be? You know because you're here today to stand up for it. It's freedom. There's freedom in South Korea. There is no freedom in North Korea. If we loosen the bonds, loosen the chains that bind the North Korean people and allow them to be free, you will see an economic and religious and a personal explosion in goodness around North Korea. Yeah. That's what we will see. So the people are there. All that's lacking is the freedom. And that's why we want to stand with you. And I, I just want to finish with this. I am a member of Congress. I have previously been a chief justice and before that a judge. And I was a prosecutor at one time and I have been in the United States Army. But when we're in a role as government, we must see that the laws are enforced. And uh, we, as Christians, are called by Jesus to love everyone, love our brothers and sisters. And in fact, when Jesus was asked by a lawyer, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus himself said, love God. Yeah. And he said that the second is similar, love each other. And he said, on those two commands hang all the law and the, and the prophets. And what he means is, if you take the Ten Commandments, you can outline them under love God, love your neighbor, love each other. And they fall under one of those. And it never became so clear what Jesus meant with those two commands as when uh, 
some years back, my mother had been uh, dying from a brain tumor. We were told it could take one to 20 years. And uh, it actually took 15 years from the time we found it. But toward the end, the doctor said, you know, she may not have that much longer. I, I have an older sister and two younger brothers. And uh, my mother loved our, our spouses, loved our children. But on one weekend, toward the end, we thought, let's, let's all go home, just the four children, and spend the weekend with mother, just having a good time visiting. By that point, my mother, who was absolutely brilliant, she put herself through college in two and a half years at Baylor without any financial help from anyone else, and was part of the Honor Society on top of that. But my brilliant mother could hardly speak. She was reduced to a wheelchair. And that Saturday morning, we sat around the breakfast table for a number of hours. We were visiting and laughing and talk about old memories and funny stories, things that uh, we all laughed about and kidded each other about. And it was a wonderful time all morning. My mother had not said a word, but you could tell she was laughing at the funny stories. But finally, after a few hours or so, Mother spoke, and she got out the word, this. So we all got quiet. We were there for my mother. We would have waited all night if it had taken that to finish what she wanted to say. She pushed on and said, is my favorite thing. It really hit me the next day driving back home. What were we doing? We were loving mother. We were loving each other. And if you were a heavenly parent, wouldn't those be your two favorite things? God wants us to love him and he wants us to love each other. And that love will manifest itself most clearly when we help the people of North Korea have the freedom they deserve. Yes. Thank you. God bless you. Um, we would like to present you with this Boys for Freedom t-shirt. Well, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. And I yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll hold up and uh, thank you for giving us freedom. Hold on to that. All right. Everybody. Yeah. Thank you.